Hey guys, Puppet Game Bad today, bringing our video. And today, for our web conversion series, we are covering the Cronin Squall and converted it into the General Dynamics Texas Future Weapon System True Velocity NGSW AR R bid for the NGSW program. That is the RM277. So let's go ahead. We'll build this thing up. Convert it, I'll show you the recoil, everything like that, and then we'll jump in game with it against some uh, bots to see how it performs. So, go ahead and backing out. Here is our final design of the weapon. Beautiful looking weapon. Now, how do you unlock this? First off, it's going to be in the battle pass. So, for the battle pass here, you're going to want to, there's a few different ways to do this. C11 is where you unlock this. So, to get there... You pretty much need, you started at this uh, right here at C1. So you can easily go over to C4 to get the intervention or work your way over here for the RM277 or the Cronin Squall. An easier way to do this would be to buy into the Black Cell uh, Battle Pass and then you can have an easier time unlocking just by going down these two and you'll get a lot of unlock tokens along the way. But here it is at tier 13, the Cronin Squall. Go ahead and look at it there. Just a beautiful looking weapon. Uh, very happy they added this to the game. Definitely my new favorite weapon in the game, hands down. So, let's go ahead and back out. Back to our weapons here for this. Let's go ahead and uh, strip this thing down to base. So, at base, here's the Cronin Squall. First off, what we're going to want to do is for the muzzle attachment. The muzzle attachment, there's a new suppressor now in the game with this. The Cronin SPDR. This is going to give you... The exact suppressor that uh, initially was designed to come with this weapon, uh, the RM277 or the Amicus, that being this suppressor, which does a lot, which we'll go into here in real life when we get further into the video. But what it's going to do for the pros is sound suppression, recoil smoothness, and recoil control, which is all accurate for real life. Um, cons here, ADS speed, damage range, aim walking speed, and aiming stability. So the damage range, I would really wouldn't worry about that. You can see it's reducing it slightly, but this cartridge... Um, 6.8 by 51 millimeter really it should have zero effect on this weapon especially being in the battle rifle category so go ahead and select that now the barrel option we're actually going to stay with the base barrel here but there's a few other options you can go with here you can see this this uh, 16 inch barrel here would give us a, a different conversion uh which potentially we'll go into for an all build here at some point um let's go ahead and jump back here private match is still always bugging out gotta love it um Let's go ahead and jump back here. So the base barrel for this in real life is 19 inches, which is, seems to be what we have here. Then we have a 16-inch barrel. We have a 22-inch barrel. And then we have a longer barrel here, which is going to give us the best recoil control in slot here, um, the heavy heavy barrel for this. So we're going to stay with the base barrel. It's going to give us the 19-inch barrel. Same to real life for the uh, NGSW AR bid that was submitted. Laser option. So here, this is personal preference. I'm just going to throw on the Ollie V. For the uh, Dust Devil Blueprint option there. Just to go tan with the weapon. The Optic. So again, this is personal choice. You can see the fl those flip-up iron sights are really clean too. But what we're going to do for this... There's a few different choices. Uh, I really... I was running a multiplayer on stream. The the uh, the Angle 40 with the Rangefinder built-in looks really nice. Because it is an NGSW bid. They didn't give us a custom optic with this. Which I was hoping for that new Vortex NGSW optic. Would have been really nice. So... You could also run the uh, flip up, flip up angle 40 with again. This is just the same with the rangefinder with the magnification. I'm going to run the hammer sight, the Leopold hammer, 4.3 times with a dual optic. We have the top mounted delta. We'll go ahead and select that, and I'm going to do that because it's going to look closest to this, and I believe the trigicon with the RMR on top are going to look the closest to that vortex NGSW weapon or, uh, optic which they didn't include in the game. So I'll show you how what we'll do with this with camouflage later to make that look a little bit more accurate. So the Leopold Hammer will put that on. Stock Ops, so you can see we have a couple different pads available here, which we'll go ahead and we're going to skip this option for now. Combs are also available. We get flinch resistance and sprint to fire speed for this. So we'll go ahead and skip these. However, those are there. They look pretty nice. Rear grip option to use up another attachment. Again, more so personal preference. You can, you can swap this for a grip, but I'm going to... Go ahead and run the recoil grip for the Saken ZX grip. It's going to give us uh, recoil control. Cons are aiming stability, which we're making up for with the laser attachment. So we'll select that. And the final attachment here is going to be for the magazine. So you can see there this transparent 20-round magazine. Or excuse me, the ammo is what we're going to be doing. So 
you can see the magazine there is translucent uh and it's brass ammunition of that 6.8 by 51 millimeter so here what we're going to want to do is you can see all these other options are brass except for the composite ammo so this is the real life ammo that was designed for this weapon this is the ammo which was designed by true velocity this is that composite polymer ammo and this is actually we'll get into it we we'll talk about it more when we get into the video but this ammo basically revolutionized the fire industry firearms industry as far as i'm concerned which is why i'm kind of bummed this weapon wasn't picked however the true velocity ammo i think is going to be staying around because they did a lot with this which we'll talk about later so the 6.8 composite ammo this is going to give us you can see a composite it's really polymer so shell casing that reduces projectile weight which in turn offers better weapon handling and increased reserve ammo so the pros here in game are ammo reserve aimed on sight speed sprint to fire speed with the cons being damage range and bullet velocity so in reality the pros would also be in real life damage range because it's a it's a lighter round and the way they're doing it is proprietary they're they're packing more uh powder in there and the bullet velocity would also be greater with this round as well given the, the powder and the damage range with the round itself so um it would also mitigate recoil in real life so they did a lot of tests which we'll talk about later um this round reduces recoil so another really cool uh piece of information there. so the composite ammo this polymer case ammo is the only one that we have here the others are all brass so to stay true to real life we'll go with the composite ammo and that's our final design here but we're gonna want one more thing uh we're gonna go i mean you don't need to do this but i'm gonna throw on the tan uh camo the clay camo there just so we get the uh tan colored um hammer there so that tan colored hammer site now it's kind of going along with a little bit along the lines and more so of what the uh the vortex would look like at least with the right camo but again you don't need to run this um you can see it also turns the barrel that tan color too which i'm not the biggest fan of but i think it looks really really clean um this is probably as close to the real world option we're going to get in real life that suppressor would be black though um as well as the barrel but other than that pretty solid weapon here the final design for the general dynamics texas future weapon system and true velocity bid for the ngsw program the amicus or the rm277 firing that 6.8 by 51 millimeter composite polymer cased ammunition so here just some things to note um if we zoom in right there on the back or well the front of the magwell you have that rear um magazine ejection right there um between the pistol grip and the magwell so that would be to eject the magazine there on the rear on the rear grip then we have completely ambidextrous fire controls here so select fire is completely ambi and you can see the bolt release there is also ambidextrous and here they're going with um what looks like m-lock hand guards on this one the real life handguard is definitely a little bit slightly different you can see the charging handle is also completely ambidextrous you can see it there you could switch that around it's uh you're able to switch to whichever side you prefer in real life so here it's configured on the left hand side and then we have the ejection port here uh right above the magwell so this again is configured to eject on the right hand side this is also uh configurable for both left and right hand shooters so you could configure this to eject on the left side with the charging handle on the right side um whichever you prefer so very very cool weapon here and the other thing here is the barrel is actually free floating and it's reciprocating so it reciprocates and works in conjunction with the proprietary uh recoil mitigation system and this suppressor on the end to further reduce recoil along with the composite polymer rounds which also reduce recoil so this thing is actually a really interesting weapon now in game here i'm not sure if the i think the barrels reciprocating but again it's really impossible to tell unless i was looking at it uh in third person but here is the do the weapon inspect here the rm227 ar general dynamics bid for the ngsw program go ahead and in single fire here just kind of shoot it off so it's going to be one shot to the head same with battle rifles for the first and second target and then i believe it's going to be two out to that third one so let's test it here one one i think this should be two or one sorry one no nope. Okay, maybe it's because of the ammo I'm using. It's only a uh, two-shot at those ranges. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, it's got to be because of the ammo I'm using, unfortunately, reducing it. But um, to stay true, we're going to use it. Now, full auto is actually very controllable. 
And also keep in mind, this base 20 round magazine, and then you have a 30 round and a 50 round, which seems a little crazy, but you can see it. Pretty easy to control. It definitely wants to kick up, but uh, it's relatively easy to control at those ranges. Go ahead here and just let this thing rip. So there you go. It's going to go straight up and a little bit to the left. Let it go once more. Straight up into the left. Obviously, if you fire this thing in semi-auto, it's going to be a little bit more accurate, especially at those longer ranges here. Easier to control, depending on how you do it. But again, you can see there, it's just going to go straight vertical instead of curve or uh, to the uh, left there. So pretty interesting. Again, take a look at the inspect here. See the ambi fire controls, the composite polymer cased ammunition. Just very, very nice looking. Reload animations clean. So, do the inspect with one left in the uh, in the chamber. Let's take a look. Ooh, that was actually wrong. Unless it doesn't feed in right away. Beautiful weapon. So, go ahead now and we'll back out and uh, just take a look at it once more here. So, again, here it is really nice looking you can also without the camo it looks beautiful as well now the custom camos for this just so you guys see we have the cronin squall or for, we have the uh excuse me the vapor storm ghastly green we have the stone ridge which looks really clean and then we also have uh the intergalactic which looks kind of interesting also you can see what the mastery camos look like on there as well very nice i really like this stone ridge looks pretty pretty clean as well so that's the uh chrono squad or the rm22277 excuse me just a beautiful weapon um jumping into the gameplay here i think that's all i had to show so jumping into the gameplay for this weapon um just running it here on the museum map because it's a really clean good lighting map now information on this weapon we'll just kind of run through some things here because there's really not a lot of public information because this was um part of the ngsw the army's ngsw program which was the program to replace the m4 platform weapon so ngsw standing for next generation squad weapon um this bid was for the ar so the ar replacement and the r for the rifle replacement so ngsw ar ngsw r program and what they did here is general dynamics and true texas weapon texas future weapon system teamed together along with true velocity uh, who came up with this ammunition and came up with this bid, which is the only bullpup, at least, that made it to the final three between General Dynamics, Sig Sauer, and Textron. The only, this was the only bullpup to make it uh, to those top three. This weapon here finished second in the NGSW program behind the Sig Spear, which was chosen as the XM5 or the now designated XM7, which would be the M7, was the winner of that program. Um, especially with the uh, MG338 was also the winner in the MG250. So we have the MG338 as the RAL here in this game. Now, this weapon here, like I said, the ammo is a very key component of this weapon, which I think will is why we'll see this ammo. So True Velocity, they came up with this ammo, this polymer-cased ammo, which uh, it's, a, it's a lighter. It allows you to carry more ammo um, on Soldier. And one thing they did here is instead of reinventing the wheel they came up with this ammo and general dynamics and these three that paired together did not enter any other bids into the ngsw program you, the requirements they wanted there was available slots for a replacement for the saw replacement for the brown and m m250 or excuse me the 50 cal and they only submitted this arr bid here with the rm227 or the amicus and the reason they did that is because with this true velocity ammunition they went around to the U.S. Army looked at the M24 rifles. They looked at went over down to Florida to Knight's Armament Company, and they also looked at the current uh, LMGs, which are deployed by the U.S. military, being the M240s. And what they did is they did barrel swaps for those weapons to to do proof of concepts. And they did a barrel swap for those weapons so they were uh, compatible with the 6.8 by 51 millimeter polymer ammo. And what they found was not only did a you're reducing the uh, carrying weight of the weapon because you have a lighter round and your the round itself weighs much less than brass you can carry more on body but the ballistics were comparable if not better 
than those weapons that all fire 762 by 51 millimeter and that's really what this program is is to defeat near pure body outer armor so when they replace those barrels with the uh knight's armor company sr25 the knight's armor company uh stoner lamg they also replaced the barrels on the m240 and the m24 and they found that this weapon was extremely effective still if not better than it was also with the 240 that barrel replacement you could fire off a full belt and open up the feed tray and feel it and the the feed tray was still ice cold you take these rounds these composite rounds the polymer casings that are ejected and hold it up to your face and they're cold so your weapon will not overheat you can carry more ammo get more more fire down range faster and have better ballistics so this is actually a revolutionary type of ammo and it also reduces the recoil of the weapon they did comparisons with the scar heavy of the mark 17 versus brass ammo and this composite cased ammo of the 6.8 by 51 millimeter and the uh recoil and the gas was much less than brass ammunition so this round itself the true velocity composite polymer case round is revolutionary now that being said that's why i think we'll still see this round in the future um especially for something like 240 which is such a heavy weapon but the rm277 things about this thing the barrel length in real life for what we know is uh 19 inches now the the advantages here of a bullpup is this weapon is only 29.25 uh, inches overall length in real life you have a 19 inch barrel the benefits of the bullpup are that you have a shorter compact rifle with a longer barrel so that's really what's great about this weapon um obviously it's very light lit lightweight especially with this composite ammo you also have fully ambidextrous fire controls you can swap out the side you want the charger handle on swap out the ejection port you can also it has the free floating uh reciprocating barrel on there with a uh, patented recoil mitigation system in this weapon and it, that works with the suppressor that we have here in real life to reduce recoil and reduce uh the gas output of this weapon so all these things working together make for a very very good weapon now the ngsw program like i said was was developed essentially to find a replacement for the m4 and these other key weapons like the saw the m240 the browning 50 cal um and it had to be a certain amount of requirements mainly to defeat near pure body armor that's that's basically saying if we went to war with russia or china we needed something that was going to penetrate their armor uh that the five something that the 556 five, really can't do and need something to have better ballistics in the 556 five, so that's where the 6.8 by 51 millimeter round comes in the ballistics of this thing you can get a you can get a lot greater bullet velocity out of this compared to an m4 with a 5.56 by 45 maybe your max max firing range is like 500 uh, meters with something like this you're looking upward of i think around 1100 is what it is depending on uh the grainage again a lot of stuff is still classified so we really don't know the good thing is this amicus is going to be available uh for civilian use at some point this thing's going to come out of the market the rm277 so i'm really excited for that can't wait to get my hands on this thing uh in real life someday hopefully i'll link down below the video from task and purpose where he got hands on with this he does a really great job going into that saying how it feels compared to the m4 he was he's a, a, a vet as well so or he's a vet so he knows the, how that feels compared to an m4 which he he carried during service so he was able to get used to this and actually really liked it and found that the recoil was not bad at all and he goes into a lot of things um that he liked and didn't like about shooting this thing in real life and he actually got hands-on with the textron and the sig spear as well so um he's experienced all of them me personally this is my favorite bit i was a little bit disappointed that this one did not win the uh competition but i'm really happy we have it here in game so this is the general dynamics true velocity texas future weapon system rm277 or the amicus bid for the ngsw program let me know your thoughts down below if you like this weapon what your favorite attachments are this thing is going to be a lot of fun to use i'm excited to play with this i will be live on twitch sometime later tonight too after this video comes out uh, a couple hours later i'll post it on twitter i'll be live doing some dmz with this and the intervention so go ahead and come and hang out for that also social media links all that are down below in the description we have twitch uh the kick i need to add in there we also have instagram twitter and discord those are the plus places to get a hold of me um but let me know your thoughts down below this is a weapon i'm very happy they added over the spear because of the spear firing the same cartridge but again it's very similar to the um to the m13 in, in many ways and i think if they added that weapon this early it would be a little bit disappointing 
uh, to have another receiver off of off of that M13 platform. So this makes a lot of sense to me. I think this is one of those weapons that really revolutionizes the uh, modern firearms industry, as far as I'm concerned, with the ammo. What they're doing with this weapon is uh, the bullpup in in Western society just isn't really heard of, and this is a really nice weapon. So. Hopefully this thing get pick, gets picked up in, in some aspect, whether it's law enforcement or whatever. Um, it's a great weapon. I'd love to see it stick around in some way or form one or another. So let me know your thoughts down below. Till next time, this is Buffer Gaming with the weapon conversion for the Cronin Squall into the RM277AR. Till next time, this is Buffer Gaming out.